I don't use Vim, I don't use Emacs, and I don't have a mechanical keyboard that makes really satisfying noises. I use my mouse, and I right click to make new folders, and I rename my files manually, and I organize every single window on my screen like this. Basically, I'm not hyper organized, and my workflow is far from optimal. Which, if you were to extrapolate, is hours and hours and days and days over an entire year. Time that is much better spent elite coding or doing side projects or becoming a programming god. Which, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not even close. The other day I saw a bunch of programming videos on my homepage that were basically implying that if you didn't do all these things then you weren't a real programmer. So I wanted to give the entire programming community a PSA. And what right do I have to do that? No right. And what are my credentials? Well, of all the people who could have been laid off at Bolt, I was the lucky one. So I'm special. The truth is, it doesn't matter at all. For all you people out there who are like me, programming noobs when it comes to all these tools, you're doing just fine. You don't believe me? Well, let me walk you through my entire history of programming. I started in ninth grade when I took web development, and I don't remember if we had an official IDE, but I think it was Notepad++. I confirmed this by looking up the popular editors for web development in 2012, and it was actually number two, which is kind of crazy. Then I took mobile application programming, and we use a software that is open source and 100% free by MIT called MIT App Inventor. It was literally drag and drop. I know, using the mouse, scandalous. It used puzzle pieces, so you could remind yourself if something was possible by whether or not the puzzle pieces fit. And yes, exactly. I learned about loops and control flow logic through jigsaw puzzles. Then in 10th grade, I took AP Computer Science and we learned Grid World and our IDE of choice for Java, Eclipse. To be clear, there were much better Java IDs out there like IntelliJ, but Eclipse was free and we were broke high school students and our school didn't offer us anything else. I'm looking at you, American School of Paris. Tooling matters, of course, and I'm not saying use a punch card with some old IBM machine, but honestly, who cares? Our gadgets and devices keep getting better and better, but the core theory, that never changes. Until disproven, of course. So I think your time is much better spent just putting in the effort, doing the hard work and getting better, than obsessing over your developer experience. In 11th to 12th grades, I took higher level math classes like linear algebra and multivariable calculus. To visualize all the concepts, we use Mathematica, which I'm not sure if you're familiar, but is a really cool piece of software by Wolfram Alpha, with a company founded by billionaire prodigy and wonderkind, Stephen Wolfram. It was a little strange not to use something better known like MATLAB, and apparently the learning curve is much steeper for Mathematica, but that's what we did. I was the classic student, happy-go-lucky, just following the teacher's orders. And I'm so glad I did, because Mathematica gave me a newfound appreciation for mathematics. It transformed it from something boring into something really exciting and new. Also, throughout all of high school, I used the exact same laptop, this bad boy right here. This piece of hardware has so much character and so many fond memories. By the end, it barely held together. It was falling apart. When I got to Rice, I remember seeing everyone with their brand new MacBook Airs and MacBook Pros. Even in my high school, all the rich kids had Macs. But my family had always used Windows, so I asked my dad if I could get a new one. Back in the day, at least on the Windows side, the XPS laptops were all the rave. And that's what I opted for, the 13 inch, because it was cheaper, and it's what I used for the next four years. In Comp 140, the first computer science class at Rice, I used the online editor my professor had written up called Code Sculptor. It's actually entirely free and you can go check it out yourself. It was really nice because it forced everyone to use the same tool, which kind of leveled the playing field. There was no way to be fancier or more efficient. There were no shortcuts or key bindings, so everyone had to use the same software. If anything, it forced you to focus on the material instead of the tooling. In my opinion, the way it should be. Then in Comp 182, the infamous weed out class, it was open season. You could use anything you wanted. I was once again clueless, so I just followed whatever my favorite TA said. He recommended Sublime, so I downloaded it, and for the entire semester, it kept asking me to pay for the premium version, but I never did. I was a broke college student, but shout out Sublime. You really carried me through that class. Sublime was cool, but basic. It just made me feel legit because it had all the fancy colors. You know, like you see in the movies. I felt like an actual hacker, like a computer science student. Unfortunately, it didn't have any of the fancier features like autocomplete and IntelliSense. It was just a glorified text editor. But I wrote some of my hardest programming assignments in Sublime, so I'll never forget it. It's funny how until you know there's something better, you don't really see any flaws in your current thing. Ignorance really is bliss. You ever notice how 1080 looks amazing, but then as soon as you see 4K, when you look back at 1080, it's like you start noticing little pixels. It's all in the head. There's something to be said about the human condition here. Probably not, it's really not that deep. 
Okay, I'll stop now. Anyway, back to college. My sophomore year, I took Comp 215, Introduction to Program Design, which was Java, but also functional programming. And why we use Java to learn functional programming, I have no idea. But we did use IntelliJ, which is the JetBrains Java IDE, and that thing is goaded. Then in the spring, when I took more Java classes, we somehow went back to Eclipse. I have no idea why we would regress in such a fashion, but all of the professors documentation and packages only worked with Eclipse, so we had to. We used Subversion, which is, in my opinion, like a worse version of Git, but it got the job done. Eventually, around my junior year of college, I found the light that is Visual Studio Code, and it honestly changed my life. It's so clean and beautiful to use, and it's open source, which is amazing. I love to support open source things. The marketplace and the library of extensions are amazing too. There are so many code formatting tools which become a developer's best friend. VS Code is what I used for the rest of college. And as the months went by and I got more used to it, I downloaded more configurations and really made it my own. By the end, I had so many shortcuts and the terminal was oriented the exact right way and it was just really great. And you can't forget about the themes. I had so much fun just changing themes every couple days. Honestly, a waste of time, but gotta do what makes you happy. If you're looking to get started in the tech industry, one great option is Careerist, which offers immersive programs to fast track you to a high paying tech job. It's really easy to get started and you don't need any background in coding or tech. There are plenty of remote options and you'll attend every class live, which I think is so much better than watching recorded content. With one-on-one -on -one guidance from a personal mentor, you'll put theory into action and supercharge the next phase in your growth. Most graduates land a job in two to four months, but careerists put their money where their mouth is. If you're out of luck for one year after graduation, they'll give you 100% of your money back. Careerists has already helped thousands of graduates get high paying tech jobs in over 40 states. So join today using my special link in the description for 10% off. Now let's get back to some more tools. Throughout college, as you know, I had internships and each company kind of does its own thing. So I'm gonna briefly go through each one. During my first two internships, we used Visual Studio, which is like VS Code, but the paid version and not open source. It's really good if you're using C Sharp, but not for anything else. So at Slumberjay, that's what we use, and then also at Microsoft. At Gusto, though, we use the JetBrains ID for Ruby on Rails, which is called RubyMine. At Bolt, I started off with VS Code, but the repository was just too big for it to handle. The front end and the back end, it started lagging and it was really hard to navigate through the code base. Maybe VS Code has a ways to go with big industry monoliths at scale, but my roommate who works at Microsoft claims it's gotten much better. So let me know in the comments if your company uses it and it works fine. I ended up using VS Code just for the front end because it's much more lightweight. And then we used Go at Bolt, so I used the JetBrains ID Goland, which amazing. In many ways, everything I've just told you is arbitrary. None of it matters. I just wanted to show you that we all have our unique ways of interacting with code and programming tools, and it, they're all okay. Some of us write code on Google Docs, which is Turing complete, by the way, and others know how to navigate all of them without ever taking their hands off the keyboard. I mean, I do not get why anyone would use spaces over tabs. I mean, why not just use Vim over Emacs? <laughs> I do use Vim over Emacs. Oh, God help us. But I'm none of those people. I'm just the average run-of-the-mill software engineer. If you ever think for a second that a Windows computer rather than a Mac computer is the reason you haven't become a computer scientist or software engineer, then you're mistaken. Or even worse, you know the truth, but you're lying to yourself. When you're just starting out, better tooling is a distraction. Just put in the work and you'll see results. Like my Gusto CTO used to say, you have to earn the privilege to break up your monolith into microservices. Well, one day you'll earn the privilege to upgrade your tooling, but for 99% of you, it won't make a difference. Focus on what actually matters and I promise you'll get much further. I'll see you in the next one.